Hey, it's Corey from SkySwitch, and this is going to be a sped up walkthrough of the Teams connector setup. This is somewhat of a checklist video, and I just wanted to provide this to help people get started. There's a bit of pre-setup that I would recommend in getting going with the Teams connector. Obviously, you'll need to request access from SkySwitch support. You'll get an admin invite. Once you have this, you can invite other admins to your own company, so you only need to request one. We're highly going to recommend setting up a trial account first, especially if you're not familiar with the Microsoft Admin Console on Microsoft Office 365. You don't want to go live on your first customer because there's quite a bit that you'll have to walk them through. As a warning, you can count on 24 hour plus sync times from Microsoft to update their own graph API where a third party application like the Teams connector can pull the information that it needs. Now you'll want to verify if you're installing with an end user client who has their own tech. You'll want to verify who the global admin is and get really friendly with them because you're going to be working with them for a little bit. You may also request to be the global administrator or a global administrator for your end customer's company if they'll allow you to. Okay, so we're going to get started. And to do so, I'm going to switch over to the enterprise admin view. Right now, I'm an enterprise level global admin in the Microsoft Office 365 console. And this is a test account that I set up. You can get going with a free trial of the Microsoft Small Business Plan. As long as you add the phone system license, it's a good way to test out the Teams connector and make sure that you're comfortable with troubleshooting Microsoft type issues. So we're still in the pre-setup. There's a few things that you'll want to do inside of the admin console. One is verify that you have valid and good licenses. Uh, you can look at licenses by going over to licenses and apps inside of a user. You can also look at your active licenses under billing, and I'm sure there's several other ways to do so. So this user has Microsoft 365 Business Standard and the Office 365 phone system. You'll also want to verify under the apps that there's no domestic routing or direct routing plans enabled. These would cause Microsoft to overwrite your actual routing. The next step is going to be to verify that the services for the domain are enabled properly. So to do this, you're going to go over to settings and domains, and you'll want to look under the services column and make sure that there's Skype or Skype for Business or Link or Teams showing in this. And that just is a baseline verification that there are some level of phone system routing configs on the domain. You probably won't see this by default, uh, so you just go in and select services in your uh, choose columns options here. Now here's another warning. If your domain was just set up inside of the Microsoft 365 admin console or you just add a fresh FQDN inside of here, you'll want to wait 24 hours before proceeding because you're just going to get stuck in the initial steps. It's always a good idea anytime that you make changes inside the Microsoft admin console to plan for 24 hours of wait time before proceeding to the next steps. Now, some of it is quickly, like licenses may show up uh, within a few minutes or a few hours, but oftentimes 24 hours is the gold standard with Microsoft provisioning. And while you're in the pre-setup, just make sure that the tenant has logged into Teams before. Just ask them the question, have you logged into Teams? Have you used Teams before? If they haven't, once Teams provisions, ask them to log in. This will save a little bit of hassle later on. Okay, so now we're going to get into your setup. So you'll receive your credentials by email after submitting your support ticket. Now the email would come from connectedteams.com and you would have an invitation code in there. Once you're signed in and logged in, uh, you'll have a view that looks somewhat like this. 
Right now, I have a single enterprise already provisioned. But the first thing you would want to do in here is add any other administrators. It's as simple as just adding their username and email under add new admin. Then they'll get an email invite as well. From there, you're going to want to go to manage branding. Uh, and I would recommend looking at this very closely before proceeding over to the next steps. This will help you understand where each of these come into play, especially in the email templates as far as what you say in your emails to your end clients. Right now, everything is going to be branded as teammate, but there are a lot of different like tags you can throw in to customize these. Okay, and then we would proceed into adding the enterprise. Now I've already added my enterprise here and I'll include a short screen recording of what they actually have to do. But in adding an enterprise, we would just put a name. This is a friendly name for your customer, an admin email ID. And this should be the global admin, but if for some reason it's not sent to the global admin of the Microsoft tenant, they can forward it. There's an invitation code that can be copy and pasted. So it doesn't have to be the global admin, but that's just where you want to start. Uh, the SBC region, just choose the closest to you. At this time, I'm sure it's going to be US East. Set your user limit. Uh, and this is uh, how many users can be provisioned on the tenant. I guess this is up to you as far as what you want to do with your client, but they would be able to add their own users according to the limit or not having any limit. The account type is going to be PBX, and the music on hold setting is either going to be no setting or the PBX music on hold. The team's music on hold is just not working yet, and there's more control in the PBX music on hold anyway. Then you'll want to select the NetSapiens for PBX type, and the add new extensions option is going to be important here. This allows you to add new extensions or your enterprise admin to add new extensions to your PBX users. This I would recommend being on, uh, but you have to be careful about what you're allowing your global administrator to do. But add new extensions here allows teammate to jump into the API and add extensions themselves. The alternate option is you go into the PBX and add suffix extensions yourself, which can be selected by yourself or the enterprise admin in the teammate console. Okay, so from here is where the, after you submitted this, is where the global administrator would kind of take over the setup. And this is where you kind of have to walk them through a little bit. So I'm going to switch over to the global admin view and just jump into my Outlook. Again, I've already done this, but I'm gonna just show you a little bit about what there is. They would receive an email that looks somewhat like this. So this has just the basic branding at this point, but the email comes from connectedteams.onmicrosoft.com. We have an invitation code, and then we would just hit complete. Complete is gonna take them back to the enterprise.connectedteams.com. This is enterprise.connectedteams.com, not service.connectedteams.com. There is a difference, and it's basically reseller portal versus end user portal. So they would sign in, and upon signing in, this is probably one of the most frequent places that there is a problem. If the Microsoft services aren't fully provisioned, or there's some sort of error in the provisioning, you're gonna to have to go back and either wait longer or manually correct it depending on the error. If you do have an error, you can check the teammate articles in their documentation to try to figure out what that actual error is. Some would need to be corrected with PowerShell and some, again, it's just a waiting game. So the enterprise user would sign in. I've already done this. Here you would uh, end up just approving permissions. And then they would go in and start with the direct routing management. So they're going to hit direct routing. They're simply going to uh, go in here, verify the licenses. These should both be green, assuming there's active licenses. And that's another checkpoint item. You have to have one available license of each type. And that's just for the setup. The direct routing user that's set up by teammate is 
going to be requiring one of each of these licenses. After the setup is complete and direct routing is complete and everything is working, you can deprovision those licenses from the user. You can't delete that user, the direct routing user, but you can remove the licenses and use them elsewhere. So they would click on the direct routing tab at the top. They're gonna get some options to select the domain and there will be some information uh, as far as the domain's ready or there's a failure. You may have to do some additional troubleshooting if there's a failure as far as just seeing if like Teams is enabled. So after the direct routing is complete, they're gonna pass the ball back to you, uh, but I can see these settings inside of the Enterprise Console, so I'm just gonna go in from here. You would set up your PBX settings, and they're gonna look somewhat like this. You're gonna have the PBX domain name and the PBX SIP domain uh, and change your voicemail code to 5001. At this time, the advanced settings need to be applied by SkySwitch support. What we're doing here is adding an API token that is dedicated to Teammate. We would also add the masquerading credentials for a reseller level user, and this is just to show the PBX portal inside of Teammate. After this step, SkySwitch support will send you an email just saying you're done, ready to go to the next step. From there, the enterprise admin, the global admin again, would have to sign in and go to user management. Now there's two things they can do here. I would suggest going to the team's management first. They would have to build their application. So it's a step-by-step, but essentially you're adding the application into the team's console. Once a user is logged in from their domain, they can go in and just select the application and pin it to their sidebar. They would go into manage users uh, and what they want to see at this point is the sync teams registrations. This is another waiting game. So it may not be available and probably won't be available right when the PBX settings have been put in. It could take a day, it could take two days. Uh, this we've seen take four or five days. And this is essentially for Microsoft to push to their own graph API where teammate can recognize changes in the settings. So we would select sync team registrations. It's going to just pull in all of the team's users and team's user information. Once this is done, we would go back into the uh, user management, manage users, and then we would be able to select individual users and provision their phone number and their SIP extension. There's gonna be a drop down, and essentially what we're doing here is linking a Teams user to a SIP user. And this is how Teams knows which user is which extension, or how Teammate knows, not Teams itself. But once a user logs in at that point, you are good to go. Now there's several places where people run into problems, and most of them have to do with Microsoft provisioning. So it's typically on the enterprise first sign-in, uh, but it could also be any step in the Microsoft provisioning process. And you just have to be prepared to look up error messages in both the teammate articles as well as the Microsoft articles and troubleshoot. But that's it. Once you're good here, you're good to go and you're, you're pretty much done. People can log into Teams and start using it as a phone. So thank you. I hope this was helpful.